entry and school certificate examination. Instead, he was employed as a third-class clerk in the Ministry of Internal Affairs. I say the disappointment was not enough when his school certificate result came out. He failed English language and according to the educational policy then, it meant that Okeke has failed his school certificate. He was demoted to clerical assistant in his office and his colleagues who got grade 3 became his senior. Rather than discourage this young boy, this failure rather increases burning ambition to succeed. To him, if one does not succeed, he should fight on. It was do or die. This was a nickname he picked in school. With the aid of his uncle, he registered for part-time studies in all level courses. Physics, Mathematics, Chemistry, Additional Mathematics, Biology and English at the Federal School of Science, Lagos. He hoped to study all these courses in one year and take GCE. In addition, he worked full-time in the morning and made for the school by 4 p.m. and returned by 10 p.m. daily. Okeke reported to office as early as 6 a.m. and studied until office opened by 9 a.m. Then he treated all his duties within two hours and yet again studied his books secretly. His duties involved keeping records of prison activities. He worked with people mostly from western Nigeria. They would record names of incoming prisoners and discharge, acquittal and transfer dates in various prisons. It was mostly an atmosphere of record keeping. He was one of the youngest employees. And so he soon became accustomed to being bossed around by older and much more qualified colleagues. He never participated in office discussion and jokes. His supervisor was aware of young Okeke's great ambition and refrained from disturbing him. This ambitious boy rarely slept at night. He studied his Nelkin physics and Holderness and Lambert chemistry textbooks like novels, page by page, and worked the entire problems in these books. Uh, the greatest uh, humiliation I had was when a, 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 a third class uh, student, so a student who got grade three in school, so I became my boss. And uh, I must tell you, I felt it very much. But one promise I gave him is that I'm going to teach him a lesson. And that I did. When I got a first class, and uh, got all the subjects in GC, all A's, and then showed him my, my mark to create it. One weapon the young Okeke had was that he liked mathematics. He was not afraid of solving any mathematical problem. To everyone's surprise in the office and school, when the result of his GCE examination came out, he obtained distinction in all the subjects and broke the school record. This marks the beginning of Okeke's greatness. He registered for GCE advanced level. As a part-time student for the first time in the history of science school Lagos, PN Okeke broke record again by scoring A1 in three subjects at the GCE A level. With his A-level passes, he resigned his 17-pound job in the ministry. He was appointed a tutor of physics and mathematics as an inter-BSc holder on a salary of 25 pounds. In addition, Okeke secured a part-time evening job to lecture in physics at a salary of 15 pounds a month. It is important to note that one pound meant a lot those days. For example, Okeke's total spending and feeding in one month was about two pounds. Okeke taught in the school for nine months before he secured direct entry admission into the University of Lagos. Initially, he applied to read physics, but when the admission was offered, it was for civil engineering. This was deliberately done by the accessors who were very impressed with his results and wanted him to read the better course according to them. Okeke did not consult his parents when he entered the university. He paid his fees as off-campus student from his small savings. He rented an apartment in a secondary school hostel near St. Fimbus Secondary School. Fortunately, after a chance encounter with the registrar of the university, who felt pity for him, Okeke was given a loan scholarship to move into the university hostel and stop his part-time teaching. At the end of the first year, he ranked first position in the Faculty of Science to win the University Scholarship Award. This was a great award, which entitles him to free tuition, boarding, clothing allowance and book allowance.
In addition, the university was duty-bound to sponsor his PhD work overseas after his first degree in Lagos University. Unfortunately, the Nigerian crisis of the early 1966 began. This is not an occasion to stir up emotions, but it is impossible to forget that men, women, and children of our kith and kin were taken out of their beds and slaughtered. They were massacred in places of worship, in the streets, in marketplaces, and in vehicles trying to carry them to safety. And this was how Okeke lost his University of Lagos scholarship award. When he came back and joined the University of Nigeria, he was forced to pay school fees. Okeke worked extremely hard to complete his third year in the University of Nigeria. He also secured a vacation job at the university when the Nigerian Biafra War broke out in 1967. Nsuka was captured at the early stage of the war and Okeke narrowly escaped the cut off by the Nigerian troops. He lost all his books, certificates and all his belongings including his precious relay bicycle. The situation worsened and the war dragged on for nearly three years. Okeke quickly joined research and production mainly to avoid being conscripted into the army. There, Okeke put his physics theory into practical. He was among the Rocket and Owuniwe mass killer group. This group demonstrated that where there is a will, there is a way. Okeke was able to design rockets, bombs and others. He was later appointed research and production airports representative charged with the responsibility of procuring research materials. At the end of the war, precisely in 1971, Okeke took his final degree examination in physics and came out in flying colors. Even though he scored A in all courses, the university denied Okeke first class honors for no fault of his. The reason was that there was no sufficient physics equipment that year due to war crisis. Okeke was therefore given a second class upper division in physics and was among the best three in his class. Immediately after his graduation, Professor Okeke secured a teaching appointment at Immaculate Conception College, Benin City. Fortunately, six months later, the University of Nigeria offered a letter to him recalling him to the university as one of the two junior fellows employed in physics department. Okeke returned to the University of Nigeria in 1972 where he lectured as young assistant lecturer. Earlier, he and one other registered student by name, late Okechuku Chiapwell, took a first year examination, five courses on the whole, and Okeke scored A in all of them to make a cumulative of four over four. For these outstanding performers, MSc was waived for Okeke and he was asked to proceed to a PhD. Incidentally, when we were admitted to do a master's, after one year, we had a, an exam. And in that exam, I scored a level four over four, cumulative. And therefore, they waived continuation of master's. I had to go straight on to the exam. I don't know whether I don't test nowadays. But I, I broke record in my first uh, year exams. That is why now I don't have master's. I have MBSc and PhD. During this period of research, Okeke lectured first and second year students in both theory and practical and had an option to study his PhD either in London, where he secured admission in Imperial College or in the University of Nigeria in Suka under the supervision of Professor F.N. Ndeli and some visiting lecturers from China and India. He later graduated as the first PhD of the University of Nigeria in December 1975. This spectacular achievement was acclaimed throughout the country. Have you ever seen a man called Pierre Lokeke? Have you ever met the personality by us Okeke? He's a great professor of physics in our time. The first PhD of the University of Nigeria. The first president, African Astronomical Society. He's an astronomer, extraordinary worldwide. He applies astronomy in all he does. A role model for every young Nigerian science student. The road to achieve greatness is tough, but keep on trying. 
Professor Pius Wankwo Okeke is one of Nigeria's great scientists. He is a name synonymous to Nigerian science students, especially in secondary and tertiary institutions. PN Okeke is a textbook of choice as far as physics is concerned in Nigeria. He believes that every young person in life is different from any other. To these young ones, PN Okeke believes that he could bring wonderful and very special way of solving unsolved problems. Oh yes, if only they make it in Maloya, Professor Pius Wanko Keke, on the name The Oak of Physics. He married his sweetheart, Francisca Nekaokoye, in 1974. After the war, my father was worried the fact that I'm, I'm not getting married. I thought that's how I'm married. But that was not in my record at all. Marriage was not, in fact, my record. What I, my ambition is to finish my first degree and get a PhD. In order to satisfy my dad, I started looking for a wife from my town. And for your information, the first lady I met captured me. <laughs> and they fell in love with me and I could not escape them. <laughs> so this is how I got my wife. But we had to live for three years. Friendship before we got married eventually. When the war was over, 1970, these people, they would be going from house to house looking for I see. <laughs> so somebody, a friend of the family, brought him to the family and then he declared to me his interest. Because many people were coming. Though I was still very young. Then when the other people came, my younger ones, even the one, my elder brother, they would give the people and say, I don't mind it, go back to your... Because I was still in secondary school. They go back to your school, they are very stupid. But when he came, they would 